Hi, this is your host, Aptin Bhartia, and welcome to Leave Her Let's Talk. My next guest is Eldad Fuchs, founder and CEO of AppRite. Eldad, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. You folks raised uh, $10 million to build the open source alternative to Google Firebase. Uh, and since you're also a founder of the company, so I also wanted to understand the history and the story of the company. So let us start with the basics, uh, which is... Uh, what problem you saw in the space that you wanted to solve, which led to creation of AppRite? Yeah, so I'm originally a software engineer myself, and I had multiple problems when I started AppRite. And honestly, I started AppRite to solve my own problems. I didn't really thought uh, too much about others. And I felt uh, a lot of problems both as a, as a technology leader. I was both an R&D manager and a CTO, and both as an engineer myself. Uh, I felt that as an engineer, there are so many things you have to master and so many complexity that is just piled up on top of each other. And it felt like things are not going to get any easier. And, you know, traditional cloud solutions like AWS and GCP have done a really good job abstracting a lot of uh, previous complexity that we had in managing uh, our own infrastructure and servers. but. They have created also a new layer of complexity for developers because those solutions were never designed for developers in mind. They were designed for IT personnel or for DevOps. And for developers, it was a big complexity. And it felt like a new abstraction layer needs to be created in order to give developers the same capabilities, but with APIs and interfaces that they are familiar with and they already love and know how to consume. So basically, AppRite is this abstraction layer on top of those uh, traditional uh, infrastructure that allows developers to rapidly develop new applications on top of uh, any core APIs that they usually need to build on themselves, like an API for managing users, for managing a database, for managing storage, and even cloud functions that allows you to customize your entire solution in, according to your own business needs. Now, if I want to just like, have a very myopic view and look at app right and ask you what exactly do you do do you folks do so we basically we create an abstraction layer that allows developers to quickly build secure applications on, on top of existing apis and protocols that they already know how to consume instead of building those solutions from scratch or trying to combine different solutions and integrating them together which sometimes can take you weeks and even in worst cases, it won't even work, and all the upright different services are integrated together to work perfectly in harmony. Also, you folks, you know, kind of not compete, but you know, look at Google Firebase, you know, and offer an alternative. How different is AppRight from Google Firebase? Well, so we can see multiple differentiations. Uh, the first one and the most obvious one is that we're building our product uh, as an open source project with the open source community, which has been a huge and massive uh, multiplying factor in our growth and in our product advancement because we have over 250 contributors and a community of over 40,000 developers that is just always backing us up, helping us move forward and improve the product and uh, in get uh, the word out to, to more people. On the other front, because we're an open source solution, we're also a self-hosted solution, which allows you to host your data on your own data center, on your own infrastructure, and also own it. So when we see privacy and uh, more, more privacy awareness and more regulations around the world, self-hosted solutions are actually a really good answer to a lot of organizations out there, and we're seeing that this trend is continuously growing. On the other front, Firebase is a great solution, but it wasn't really born as a backend as a service. It kind of pivoted towards being a backend as a service. And Upright was designed to be a backend as a service from day one. And that comes into action in uh, the unique developer experience that we're offering and how the different services are so easy to consume and integrate so well with each other. You brought a point of privacy. There are so many things that we can talk about when we do talk about either self-hosted or decentralized uh, Privacy is there. Uh, another thing is vendor lock-in is also there. Uh, plus, uh, in most cases, what happens is that data is what really matters. Apps can come and go. They can run anywhere you want. But if you look at a lot of public cloud offerings, they have data gravity. You know, They try to lock you in. So can you also talk about how 
are you looking at you know, not just one problem? And also, it depends on where you are. Like, for example, you, Europe, they have GDPR, but all the Google, everything, they are complying with GDPR. But there are a lot of reasons where people don't put their stuff in, in you know, in a, in a hyper scalers. So, so talk about all the things that differentiate you from the other. And also, uh, after that, I will talk about the open source angle. But let's talk about, you know, privacy, even the lock-in and all those problems. Yeah, so... Uh... We believe that Apple should be completely unopinionated and we shouldn't assume how people are going to use it. We build a product in a way that it can play well with any technology out there or even infrastructure. That comes to action when you want to host Apple, you can host it basically anywhere you want. We want to give organization and developers the power. We believe they should have the power and flexibility. So whether your organization has some kind of compliances or regulation that he has to comply to. So you can host upright wherever you want, whether it's in a specific region, a specific data center, or with a specific cloud vendor. You can even combine between different cloud vendors. And also a solution is built on top of uh, uh, an, uh, the adapter design pattern that allows you to replace some of the internal components if you wish to. As much as you, know, as you explained, uh, giving customers control, having that flexibility is, is all good. But one more big problem that is happening is, especially in today's world, is that every company has to have software stack, cloud stack to be able to reach out to their customer. And, and cloud can quickly become very, very complicated. And that's why we see the emergence of no code and low code as well, so that you can lower the barrier of entry. How do you enable customers so that they don't spend way too much time in writing, deploying, you know, application, and they can move fast. Yeah, sure. So we believe that uh, we understand that a self-hosted solution is not a solution for everyone. You need to manage your own server. You need to have a specific knowledge base and uh, to have some skills inside your team in order to achieve that successfully. That's why we're currently working on the Upright Cloud solution, which will be the managed version of Upright, which will allow different kind of users, different kind of developers, and different kind of uh, teams to consume upright in a way that is more comfortable to them, removing some of the barriers required with the self-hosted uh, environment that or, from one hand allows you to control your data, but on the other hand might be a bit more complex to get started with. So again, we're choosing the unopinionated approach, uh, trying to find good solution for any kind of different use cases. One more problem that we see in cloud computing is that things can get complicated very quickly. So what are you doing to lower the barrier of entry so that your customers can move faster? We talk about no code, no code a lot. So I want to hear your perspective. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, you should go hybrid these days, especially with more awareness around privacy, but also the need to uh, get to production as quick as possible. Uh, you can't find uh, one solution that fits all. So that's why we are taking the, the, the approach of having both solutions available. Now, let's talk about the open source aspect of it. How important is open source for AppWrite? Open source is the most important thing uh, in AppWrite. Uh, we never created AppWrite in order to be an open source company. It was more of a, a path that we took that allowed us to accelerate everything in our product and our team and the way that we build the company much faster than any traditional company. The, our open source community has been, uh, I, I like to call it the secret sauce that is always making sure that we don't do any mistake with the product, that we're always going to the right direction, either by helping us build the product with 250, uh, over 250 contributors all around the world, or even with uh, feedback that we get constantly with every feature that we release, or even if it's just by spreading the word out, we've reached 40,000 developers in such a short time that are part of the upright community, and that was never uh, possible without being an open source community and open source minded. On top of that, our entire engineering team is actually, we hired everyone in our team from the open source, the upright open source community. They all started as users of our product, and they were so passionate about it, so they decided to contribute on their own free will. And once we had the opportunity, we started hiring all of them and our entire engineering team is built that way. We're a completely remote company. And it's also very important for us to build that new company, that new upright company on top of the same core values that help us reach that far. So if we're talking about openness, transparency or collaboration with our amazing community, that's that are all uh, stuff that are core to our, uh, the upright, to the new upright entity. 
Let's talk about the funding. Tell us what are the areas that you are going to invest in? What are the areas that you plan to grow further? Yeah, so obviously we're going to invest a lot in our uh, original open source solution. That's uh, our core solution and we want to get it better. Right now it's still in a, a better version. We're still at 1.10, reaching towards 1.0. But uh, on top of that, we're also seeing how we can uh, start building the uh, premium and uh, cloud solution, the managed solutions, so we can also create a self-sustainable business and community on top of it. Of course, everything that you focus on is open source. People can go and check those projects online. But if I ask you, what roadmap do you have? What plans do you have? Well, we work really closely with our community and actually most of our roadmap is publicly available on GitHub so everyone can affect it, view it and see what direction the project is going to take. Uh, it, we do have a bucket list uh, full of features that the community have already asked and we know people are waiting for, but this is very dynamic due to the nature of an open source community. Tomorrow we might get a really uh, valuable contribution that might uh, show a new opportunity that we need to chase. So everything is very flexible, but also very open and transparent. Well, Doc, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company and the insights that you shared. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.